Hey everybody, it's Burke here from Focus Physical Therapy. So two days ago I was working out at the gym and I did something to my knee. So I thought this would be a good teachable moment. Today I'm going to describe how we diagnose eight of the most common knee injuries plus one bonus knee injury, which is what I did to my poor knee two days ago. So if that seems cool, then stick around and check it out. Okay, everybody, it's Burke here from Focus Physical Therapy. So we're talking about knee pain today, and it is super <laughs> easy to be internet smart when you're trying to figure something out on your own. Even my close friends and family members will still go to the internet before they give me a call. So while there's no substitute for really good medical care and a physical therapy consultation, you and I both know that you're coming to YouTube or Google first. So to save you a little time and effort, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of some of the most common presentations of knee pain. Now, as a disclaimer, everybody's knee and everyone's knee pain is different. So what we're not doing here is we are not diagnosing your knee pain. I'm going to share with you how a physical therapist would approach some of the most common knee problems. And that way, if something sounds familiar or similar to your experience, then when you go in and talk to your medical professional or your physical therapist, you're going to be that much better equipped and educated and informed and can make a better decision about how to take care of your knee. So without further ado, here's how we diagnose eight of the most common types of knee pain plus one extra all in 10 minutes or less. First, let's review our anatomy. The four bones that make up the knee joint complex include the femur, the tibia, the fibula, and the patella. The muscles of the knee include the quadriceps, hamstrings, and calf muscles. Ligaments are strong structures inside and around the knee that provide stability. In particular, both the inside and the outside, as well as right through the center, strong ligaments control the motion of the knee and prevent the knee from collapsing. Running along the outside of the thigh and attaching below the knee joint line is the iliotibial band, another very strong stabilizing structure. Both the inside and the outside of the knee have a little cushion called a meniscus. Both sides of the joint, including the back side of the kneecap, are lined with smooth cartilage. Lastly, on our whirlwind anatomical tour, anytime a tendon attaches to a bone, you will find a small fluid-filled sac called a bursa. The bursa provides some protection for the tendon and also some nutrition, and it has a great blood supply. Onward to our injuries. We'll start with an easy one. If you've had trauma that pushed on your knee from either the inside or the outside and you have point specific pain right at the joint line, it's very possible that that's either a medial or a lateral collateral ligament injury. Because ligaments provide stability to the outside and inside of the knee, if the injury is severe enough, you may experience a little bit of giving away or instability in the knee that needs to be treated either surgically or with some kind of a brace. While ligaments do respond to stress, the right stress at the right time, they don't have the same degree of blood flow that other structures have, and therefore the recovery and rehabilitation is going to be slower. Another very common ligament injury in athletes is an injury to the anterior cruciate ligament, a strong ligament that sits right in the center of the knee and prevents the tibia from sliding forward underneath the femur. This is an injury that occurred suddenly while cutting on the soccer field or the basketball court or skiing, a contact trauma to the knee is not necessary to have this injury if there is enough force rotating the knee inward. It is very common for the knee to feel unstable and buckle with this kind of injury, and a diagnosis is fairly straightforward. Just a quick note, for an ACL or collateral ligament or any other trauma-related injury, Multiple structures can be involved, so a really thorough clinical exam is necessary to make sure nothing gets missed. If you have pain and swelling on the outside of the knee, and you're a runner or a cyclist, and there's no history of a trauma, it's possible that you have iliotibial band syndrome. This overuse and repetitive motion injury 
always needs biomechanical and motor control treatment as well as tissue specific treatment. So be sure and find a good PT or physio near you. Injuries to the meniscus or the cushioning inside the knee are very, very common. The meniscus is a very complex structure. The cushioning fibers spread like the net of a basketball hoop under load, such as when you're standing, jumping, or running. Those fibers are also dragged at the extremes of knee motion, such as if you're squatting fully, resting on your heels. If you have painful clicking, popping, or locking of the joint, or pain with increased pressure pushing through your foot or leg or twisting, it's possible you've injured your meniscus. While treatments vary significantly depending upon the location and severity of this injury, it's common to do conservative care first. And so find a good PT or physio near you and work on knee strength and stability. If you have more generalized stiffness of your knee that could include pain and swelling, then it's possible that you have knee arthritis. This is caused by damage, degeneration, or thinning of the smooth cartilage lining of the joint. Strengthening, stabilization, and bracing are all tools that your physical therapist will use to treat this kind of problem. A kind of arthritis or inflammation that develops between the kneecap and the femur is called patellofemoral pain or patellofemoral pain syndrome. You may have this problem if you have pain, stiffness, or swelling in or around the kneecap and it hurts to bend or straighten your knee under load such as when squatting or going downstairs. This is a problem that always needs both a tissue specific as well as biomechanical and motor control strategy. So be sure to find someone good to help you. If you have pain at the top or bottom of your kneecap and you have a history of repetitive motion or overuse or participation in sports that involve jumping, then it's possible you have patellar or quad tendonitis. Tendon problems don't develop overnight, so this one's relatively straightforward to catch. There will always be a history of repetitive motion or overuse. If this problem has been going on long enough, there's enough inflammation and degeneration within the tissue that a slow and measured approach is absolutely necessary to turn things around. So that's it for our main set of the most common knee injuries. Now, what the heck did I do to my knee? There's one structure that I mentioned in our anatomy review that didn't come up in an injury description. Let's see if you can figure this one out. Here's what happened. After a workout at the gym, I was home relaxing and I went to straighten up and I felt my kneecap catch and pop. And shortly after that, I started to feel pain above my kneecap, not underneath it. So between my kneecap and my quadriceps muscle. Now, two days later, I'm swollen in that region and it hurts if I just straighten and bend my knee without putting any weight on it at all. Also, within the swelling, I can literally put my finger right on a sore spot just above my kneecap. If you guessed bursitis, well congrats, you are at least partially right. Sitting deep under the quadriceps muscle and just above the knee joint and the kneecap, is a small muscle called articularis genu. This muscle's job is to pull the capsule and the bursa out of the way when you straighten your knee so you don't pinch them. Well, guess what I did? While this injury is not serious, it is a little like biting the inside of your cheek. It's a lot easier to tweak it once it starts to swell. So I need to be a little bit careful. I'm using a little stretchy kinesiology tape to take some stress off that. I'm using some ice and a muscle rub and I'm doing my active recovery. So that's it for today. Thanks so much for checking this out. I hope this information will make it easier for you to take care of yourself and to get the right kind of care so that you can keep moving and stay healthy for years to come. If you liked this video, please be sure and like and subscribe to our channel. And if you have questions or want more information, about anything related to rehabilitation, leave a comment in the comment section below. Thanks so much.